everybody. Today we're going to be setting up a staged heating system using uh, the Flare Puck Pros and a Google Nest thermostat connected to a boiler. Uh, as you can see, we've got um, a three-room system, so three ductless units. I'll, I'll open up the family room, for instance. You can see there's a Daikin Mini Split controlled by a Puck Pro. And the next step is to add that uh, the thermostat controlling your boiler. So you hit that plus button in the bottom right. You hit add thermostat. In my case, I've got a Google Nest today, so I'm gonna go ahead and connect that. Uh, it'll pull up the authentication where you punch in your email address um, for your Google account. Then there's gonna be an ask for a password. You're, you may have to clarify that it's this Google account that we wanna integrate in case you've got multiple then you hit continue. After that, uh, make sure this is selected, so it's orange. So I'm setting up a baseboard hydronic, so most similar to a radiator. Let's go ahead and hit next. And my thermostat is in my family room, so I'm gonna go ahead and assign it to the family room. Now, this is an important one. What rooms are in your thermostat's zone? There are three rooms uh, that this particular thermostat heats. Uh, it heats my family room, it heats uh, one of my bedrooms, and it heats uh, the kitchen area. So all three are, are selected, the first one being the room the thermostat's in, which is sort of implied and it's locked. Uh, but the other two, you know, if you had multiple thermostats, you'd be making sure you selected the right rooms that are heated by that thermostat's boiler zone uh, at this step. Hit next. You can ignore this page for now. And that's it. That's how you get a thermostat integrated into Flare. Now, uh, if you go into family room, you'll see that this family room, it, the thermostat is idle right now, uh, set to heat mode, because the whole structure is set to heat mode. Uh, so that's great. Now, what you do is you hit the plus menu, and you'll see this configure secondary heat. So just go ahead and hit that. It'll, get, it'll list the thermostats you have available. We'll hit that one. Now it's just going to confirm again that you've got the right rooms for this thermostat's zone. Uh, so go ahead and hit next. Now, you've got a couple options. You can set up the system so that the mini splits or the ductless heat pumps are supplemented by the second stage or that boiler. Uh, or you could lock out the first stage uh, so that when the boiler kicks on, the ductless units are, are turned off. I'd say the this what we call the cutover mode, uh, where you're locking out the, the ductless, that's the most common. That's what most state programs are looking for. Um, so if in doubt, I'd, I'd recommend that. But you've got options. Okay, now another option you've got is what should cause you to change between stages, right? Um, Indoor temperature is sort of like a droop option. Um, it's it's not an uncommon pick, but I would say overwhelmingly most people use the outdoor temperature. I think that's just the most straightforward for homeowners. Um, and it kind of just generally makes sense when you think about balance points and whatnot uh, is to go by the outdoor temperature. So we'll go ahead and select that. Hit next. Now, um, instead of using like a dead band and a balance point, we use more of a cut over temperature and a cut back temperature. Cut over is the temperature that the backup heat will, or the second stage heat will engage at. Uh, so we'll, that's when we'll do the stage uh, shifting right over to the second stage, either as a supplement or exclusively as the, the heating source. Um, and then, you know, we'll stay in that stage until the outdoor temperature gets back over the cut back temperature, at which point we'll go back to the first stage. I've got 25 and, and 32 here. I actually think those are pretty solid uh, for my house. So I'm just gonna leave that and hit finish setup and we're ready to rock and roll. Uh, if you go into family room now, you'll see that it says the primary heat is on and the backup heat is standing by until the outdoor temperature is below the cutover, uh, which makes a lot of sense. And that's pretty much it. Uh, from there, what you'll you'll notice is you know you can go do your typical things. You can set schedules. Um, you know you can change the modes around, uh, whatever it is. But at the end of the day, uh, as soon as you get that first real cold snap and you drop below, I guess in our case it was twenty five. Uh, you're gonna see your boiler kick on, and uh, as soon as it get 
you know, warms up again, it's going to kick back off. Uh, so pretty simple, um, you know, fairly straightforward, I think, to explain to a homeowner and real easy to do. 